Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and this is my voxelized skull. This is a really cool idea that I've been super excited to share with you guys, but I've actually shared something similar in the past, which was this voxelized sphere that I made with a 3D pen. So obviously this is much more rough since I made it by hand, but it served as the perfect proof of concept before I went ahead and spent the extra time and money to get this professionally printed on a polyjet full color 3D printer. So while the techniques are pretty different, the idea behind both of these is exactly the same. And that's that I took a large organic shape and reduced it into voxels, which are basically 3D pixels or stacks of cubes. And since a cube has six distinct sides, I figured I could paint each side a different color. And theoretically, if you look at this shape directly from one side, you'll only see one color at a time. And that creates this really cool color changing illusion as you turn it around and look at it from different sides. While this skull might seem pretty complicated, it's actually based on a pretty simple illusion that's been around for a really long time. Maybe you've already seen it. So here I have this piece of paper and as you can see, it's got all these lines. It's actually two images split into strips and alternated across this page in a way that when you fold it into an accordion along those lines, you get this interesting effect where when you look at it from one angle, you only get one image and then you switch to the other angle and you see the other image. Pretty cool, right? And I hope you can see how these are basically the same idea, just done in pretty different ways, which result in two different unique ideas. So that's something that's important to realize when you're trying to come up with ideas when you're trying to be creative and trying to be original, there's no such thing as a totally original idea, okay? Everything is based on predecessors. So if you're trying to come up with something new, don't be frustrated when you're just trying to pull things out of thin air. Instead, it's a really good idea to look at things that inspire you and see how you can push those to create something different and cool in its own way. All right, well, that's my little story as far as how I came up with this idea. Now let's go ahead and take a little look at some of the work that went into actually making this voxel skull. Before the skull, I actually tried things out on a sphere just so it would be a little bit easier, but honestly, there isn't much to it. Mesh Mixer has this make solid tool and within there, there's a blocky option that will basically voxelize any 3D model. In this case, you can see that I made the voxels pretty dense. There's 50 in every direction. I exported that as an STL and brought it into Microsoft's 3D Builder. And the reason I'm using 3D Builder is because it has the best option that I found for painting all the different sides of this sphere. If I orient the model so that I can only see one side and then drag the mouse over it, I'll be painting all the faces that are visible, which is basically what I want to do for this technique. So while I'm working on this side, I'll go ahead and paint everything red. And then I can turn my model 90 degrees and go ahead and repeat that process painting everything on this face blue. Let's jump ahead to the point where I painted every side of my sphere a different color. And as you can see, I'm rotating around and the effect seems to be working really well. From here, there's actually an integrated 3D print button that will send your model directly to iMaterialize, which is Microsoft's service for 3D printing objects. I scaled my sphere down to a 30 millimeter diameter because I wasn't sure how this would turn out and I didn't want to spend a ton of money if it was potentially gonna fail. So here we are on iMaterialize and I selected the multicolor option with the multicolor matte finish. And here we have the preview where I noticed one pixel was the wrong color. So it is very important to be very thorough coloring all these different voxels. All right, now we're good. So I'll go ahead and order that. And within about a month, it shipped to my door and here it is. So as you can see, it didn't quite work out as I was hoping. It looks kind of interesting, but we're definitely not getting that same color changing effect that the 3D pen gave us. And if we take a closer look, you can see why it's not working. Basically the resolution of this color jet printing technique wasn't good enough to make distinct sides on this sphere. It was kind of my fault for going so small with this model and having so many voxels on it. So when it came to the skull, I made sure that the voxels were big enough this time. And the way I did that was by first of all, making sure that this is properly scaled here in Mesh Mixer to the size that I want it to be in the end. 
And then when I go into the make solid command and choose that blocky option, I can adjust the cell size down here. And that's basically the size of each individual cube. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it three millimeters in every direction because I think that'll be the correct size for really getting a good effect from this skull. So there you can see it, and it looks pretty great just like that. There's not much modification I have to do, although I definitely want to hollow this out because that's going to save a ton of money when I outsource this print. So we'll go ahead and just set the offset distance here to 2.5 millimeters because that's a pretty good thickness so that this will be sturdy enough but also save me some money. All right, so that's pretty much all we've got to do here in Mesh Mixer. You can see there are some parts down here and on this side of the jaw as well that didn't actually turn into cubes for some reason. So I had to go ahead and fix that in Fusion 360 before going ahead and coming back into 3D Builder to do that paint job. Here you can see the final result and you can see I put a hole in the bottom here because when you're creating hollow parts with powder-based 3D prints like this, you need a point for the material to come out and this is also gonna make a nice fixture for a stand to hold up my skull. Coloring all the sides on this model was definitely a lot more work because you've gotta go in on all the different nooks and crannies and make sure that every face is the right color. But as you can see, the effect works really well here. And that's how well it could work in real life if we had some kind of perfect 3D printer. But there really is no perfect way to print this because you can see it's got a lot of sharp corners and the resolution of the printer is inevitably gonna round those corners a bit. And also the colors are gonna bleed over the edges a bit with this polyjet printing technique. And you can see that in real life here with this super close up shot I got. The way this polyjet printing technique works is that layers of powder are solidified with glue one layer at a time. And that glue has the pigment in it that also colors the model. But since the glue is a liquid, it's gonna bleed a bit when it's applied to the powder. Nevertheless, the effect looks super cool on this skull, and I was completely blown away with the result. The other thing about this full color printing technique is that these models aren't exactly made to be functional. They're pretty much for display only, and you really want to limit the amount of handling that you do with these prints. So I decided to also make a really nice display for it. Here's a plywood box that my dad built for me so that I could put a motor underneath the skull and have it rotate. And I was thinking I'd have to 3D print this crazy gear chain to have a motor spin slow enough, but I just happened to come upon this rotisserie motor, which is perfect for the job. As you can see, this part spins super slowly. It's pretty smooth and it's totally silent. So I decided I definitely had to use that. So that motor is going to sit inside the box here and I'll 3D print some kind of fixture to align it right underneath that hole in the center. But first, let's go ahead and model the stand for this skull in Fusion 360. Here we're looking at the model of the skull itself from the bottom and I'm going to trace out that hole that I cut into this skull on the bottom plane and offset it inwards 0.35 millimeters. That way there's a good clearance for this stand to fit into the skull. I'll extrude this profile upward and by using the two object command, I can have it extrude right up to the top of the inside of the skull. I'll also extrude down a tiny bit, that way the skull is lifted up a little higher off the display case. And I'll do a cross-section analysis here, so you can see how that part interacts with the skull. You can see it pretty much fits perfectly through that hole in the bottom, and then goes right up to the top of the inside of that hollow area. It looks pretty perfect, so now we're just gonna go ahead and add a large circular base at the bottom of this stand just to add some stability to this part. I'm also gonna have to make the part that connects to the rotisserie motor. So I created this square peg that's the correct size and comes out of the bottom of that stand, and it also fits into the stand there at the bottom as well. That way I can print these two parts separately and not have to use any support material. I also made this giant washer, which will basically act as a spacer between the stand and the display box. That way they aren't rubbing away at each other too much. So here's the stand printed on my CR10. It looks great. And I printed the other parts on my CR10S, which also looks fantastic. I also designed and printed out this one additional part, which is the piece that's gonna hold the rotisserie motor up against the bottom of the inside of that display box. 
Here you can see me marking the holes where I'm gonna screw this plastic part to the bottom of the display case. And I drilled some pilot holes first with this piece of tape around the drill to make sure that I don't drill too far through the top of the case. Then I'll just go ahead and screw in these really short wood screws and slide on that motor, which fits like a charm. Here you can see that motor aligned pretty perfectly with that hole in the top of the box. And I'll just go ahead and add my 3D printed parts and flip the thing on. So it looks good, it spins at the perfect speed. There's nothing left to do but to throw on that skull. So I went ahead and carefully placed it over the top of my stand. And sure enough, it slid on there nice and snug and fit in place pretty perfectly. My dad also made this really great acrylic case that goes over the top. And with that, this thing is pretty much ready for an art museum. All it needs is some incomprehensible esoteric meaning placed behind it. Well folks, that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. I hope you liked my voxel skull, as well as seeing the process and thought that went into it. I'll put more information about this project on my website, makeanything.design. I'll have nice photos, links to download this skull model, as well as links to this little accordion illusion if you're stuck with one of them old-fashioned two-dimensional printers. <laughs> it's all on my website, and I want to thank Squarespace, my sponsor, for creating this service that made it so easy for me to make my website. It's pretty much drag and drop. You can upload photos and throw them wherever you want, add text, add links, add downloads, and it's all super easy. So if you're thinking about making a website or an online store, a blog, a portfolio, check out squarespace.com slash make anything and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. All right, well, thanks for watching and until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.